this is another fun experiment um so this is like uh a virtual grid effectively i've got this inverter here which is um powering <laughs> sorry it's my son messing about no uh, this is um powering the grid the grid input for this inverter so effectively i've got the output of this fed straight onto the grid contact uh, there and then my load I've just run off the um, essential side because this is off grid that's what we're doing this is off grid but it's a virtual grid because the, the idea is this should contribute to this load so this is a five kilowatt and that's a six kilowatt so that'd be really good if we can get 11 kilowatts of of power from this so uh, I've got a, a little two kilowatt heater rigged up here so if I turn the heater on you'll see that this inverter is contributing and then this one starts to take the load okay that's all well and good but do you see how slow it does it so I'll do it again you can see how slow so if this was actually grid tied this is how slow it is so really it doesn't work that great for that because you would need whatever your maximum load would be you'd need this inverter your grid inverter to be able to supply the peak uh, demand of that load but what I've noticed is a little I think it's a bug but it's quite promising because it means the inverter is capable of doing it if you go to advanced fu functions and tick on mode and then you set the CT ratio up Now, what happens now is I'm going to turn the load on. i see if you can see, but actually, we'll just focus on this one. If I turn the load on straight up to 2 kilowatts, you see how quickly that did it. It did it much, much quicker than before. Um, and we'll do it on this screen as well, if that'll help. So it doesn't seem to mess up the CT ratios of this inverter everything seems to work really good so that's excellent but then say I don't know what will happen when when this inverter actually gets um, loaded so high that it needs to import from from our from our grid but we can simulate that kind of by if we set a maximum power output here Let's just set this to, I don't know, one kilowatt, 900 watts. But now what's going to happen is when we turn this on, the CT ratio is all messed up. Um, I guess because it's using the CT ratio more, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it's doing it, to be honest. So you have to set this back to the, the normal ratio um, which I think is okay but the, the only thing is again is you're using you end up using the, your, your grid inverter your virtual grid inverter as a buffer again because let me flick it straight up to 2 kilowatts you can see it takes the full load first and it's quite slow to, to jump down I don't know if it's too much of an issue I don't know I don't know what the implications of that are whether it would catch up whether this inverter would catch up in time on a bigger load um, the battery I've got can't really output that much and also frustratingly even if I set if we set this back to how it was so let's set this up to six thousand again oh that's just a random number I've picked I noticed that if you uh, move it, it the, the higher the number it, the faster it is um what was it let's just set that to unlimited hang on buddy yeah there's loads of rabbits <laughs> um right let's set that back to there again so we'll just check that that's working so nice and fast there you go that's good um, but then if you do any sort of limitation so if the inverter has to do any other thinking um, for example if we 
do the max discharge to so this inverter will only see 15 amps. I've got the how I've got it connected. I've got. I mean, it's really dodgy. You probably can't even see. So it's such a mess. But oh, there's one common battery link to both of these for this test. So then, if we do it again, so obviously this inverter now is is limited by the current that it can um, consume from the battery. Again, it's slower. So, but it still works good because now we've got our, and and the CT ratio is out. Hang on, why is the CT ratio out? Have I not? Did I not reset it? I thought I did. Oh no, CT ratio doesn't work. So that was that was the point. <laughs> is the is now um, the CT ratio is wrong. So it's the only way it works when the CT ratio is right, and you make it so it's really fast, is if you've got um, just everything set to, to default here, and then there's, it can't do it any. So there's no limitations effectively no limitations on this inverter, then I don't think it has to process as much information. I'm hoping that makes sense, it makes sense in my head. Um, so now, there's no limitations again. That's slow, why is that slow? How strange. Oh, sorry, I paused it. Um, so I had to just go into um, advanced function just un untick that okay and then retick it um, and then it and then it goes back to, to default again where this um, where it's just really quick so so that but again it still does pull the peak load but it is only for a split second it doesn't it doesn't um, scale down as much and then that, and then that's okay again and then if we change one of the settings again this is just to limit the current going into the or how much power this inverter can contribute again pretty slow but not too bad and then all the they're all wrong again so yeah it's weird I don't know not really I don't really understand why um, why the CT ratio in, in that certain configuration actually makes a difference to the speed that it can stop the import on this inverter.